The Index Astartes, a history of the Space Marine Legions and subsequent chapters, where appropriate, up to the 13th Black Crusade. The Flesh Terrors. The Flesh Terrors chapter was created during the second founding from the Blood Angels Legion. The Flesh Terrors possess the same savagery and fearsome reputation as the Blood Angels, but have also inherited the Black Rage. Indeed, the Black Rage has become more apparent, and it is now only a matter of time before the entire chapter is consumed. During the terrible, bitter fighting of the Horus Heresy, the Blood Angels Primarch Sanguinius was killed by the War Master Horus in the Emperor's assault on the Traitor's Battle Barge. The psychogenetic after-effects of this trauma were not fully realised until later. The resulting Black Rage flaw had yet to be recognised. So, according to the dictates of the Codex Astartes, the Blood Angels Legion of Space Marines was broken into successor chapters, each numbering around 1,000 battle brothers and in possession of a fraction of the old Legion's gene seed stock. One of these successor chapters was the Flesh Terrors. Following the dreadful slaughter of the battle on Terra, the Flesh Terrors were granted a single battle barge, the Victus, and immediately headed off into deep space with orders to crush any remaining rebel strongholds. For three millennia, the battle barge was directed to the loneliest regions of galactic space. The Flesh Terrors space marines on board, crusading against worlds still loyal to the dead War Master, and ruthlessly driving back any alien incursions that cross their path. During this time of exploration and battle, the Flesh Terrors gained a reputation for outright savagery, far outstripping the rumours surrounding their parent chapter, the Blood Angels. Even the distant High Lords of Terror heard tales of whole populations slaughtered whenever treacherous followers of the fallen War Master were found, and entire convoys of ships destroyed when they tried to flee the Flesh Terrors' bloody retribution. But the galaxy is a huge place, and communication can be unreliable. The High Lords ruling the Imperium in the Emperor's name saw the amount of previously hostile worlds pacified by the Flesh Terror's actions, and in this time of rebuilding, after mankind's dreadful civil war, they were satisfied and did not look too closely. The Flesh Terror's chapter journeyed through space, on board the Victus, dispensing the Emperor's justice to all who would stand against him. Taking centuries in its course, the Victus navigated its way through the far western reaches of the galaxy, intent on eradicating the increased alien presence rumoured to be there. Eventually, the Flesh Terrors discovered the isolated, forgotten world of Cretacea. Homeworld The oversized planet of Cretacea was the fourth planet in a system of seven, and at first approach it appeared to be uninhabitable. Finding Cretacea perpetually shrouded in dense cloud, the Flesh Terrors effected landings on the planet to discover what lay below. What the Marines discovered was a planet to rival any death world known in its lethality to human life. A trackless landscape of dense jungles and steamy swamps harboured many vicious reptilian, amphibious and insectoid forms of life. Many space marines were lost to these hostile creatures on the first day before effective perimeters could be established. Even so, patrols still reported casualties from insects as big as men with sharpened proboscis that could penetrate power armor. Huge reptilian predators, almost as large as scout titans, that ripped through entire squads and gigantic herbivores that could easily crush an unweary space marine with a massive foot. The flesh terrors quickly fought back against these immense creatures. Squads were engaged in hunts to cull as many of the native monsters as possible, ostensibly to clear more landing areas, though Geralius Imperial scholars now speculate that these hunts were for no other reason than to satiate the Flesh Terror's lust for killing. As the patrol squads ranged further through the jungles and swamps, incredibly, humans were found. The humans discovered were apparently descended from some long-lost colony, originally formed millennia ago, during the Dark Age of Technology, but had since devolved into an extremely primitive state. Lacking all but the most rudimentary aspects of a language, these primordial humans had somehow managed to not only adapt to living amongst the titanic monsters that roamed Cretacea, but to actually thrive in the hostile environment. They proved to be incredibly strong and had superior reflexes to compensate for their limited intellects, 
giving rise to a race that was fierce enough to defend itself against the largest of the creatures that preyed upon them. The flesh terrors promptly rounded up hundreds of the ferocious humans, and the chaplains and sanguinary priests of the chapter set to work, testing their minds and bodies in soul-destroying trials to determine any evidence of corruption caused by their long isolation from the master of mankind. Though extremely backward and primitive, the flesh terrors deem them free of deviancy. Chapter Master Amit saw the value of the world of Cretacea, the inhospitable terrain and deadly creatures provided an ideal testing ground for his troops, whilst the primitive humans already inhabiting the world could easily be moulded into a potential battle brother. Declaring right of conquest, Amit founded a permanent home for his flesh terrors. Seth, Chapter Master of the Flesh Terrors, Guardian of the Rage. Chapter Master Seth has presided over the chapter of the Flesh Terrors for over 100 years. In his time, he has experienced many great victories, but he has also seen many of his battle brothers fall to the Black Rage. He has earned a great degree of enmity with most other Imperial armies he has fought alongside. Imperial Guard and Adeptus Auroritas commanders are often simply ignored, whilst other Marines grow frustrated with Seth's impetuous desire to instantly destroy all enemies. In battle, Seth can always be found in the vanguard of his forces, leading his Marines through incredible acts of savagery and bloodshed. When the Flesh Terror's presence is not required on the battlefield, it becomes stern and dour, forever preoccupied with the doom he now believes is impossible for his chapter to avoid. Gene Seed The Flesh Terrors dropped the Blood Angel's practice of blood transfusion to new recruits when they split from the Legion after the heresy. But by this time, Sanguinius's pain had already become so bound within the chapter's Gene Seed itself, they could not escape the effects of the Black Rage. Indeed, the Black Rage seems to have become more uncontrollable, perhaps because of their isolation or change in their gene replication practices. It has now become apparent that the Flesh Terror's gene seed has mutated a great deal over the past 10,000 years and degenerated vastly. Every year, more and more Flesh Terrors succumb to the Black Rage, with very few being able to survive more than 200 years before the curse of Horus overtakes them. Cretacea has provided the Flesh Terrors with a good source of recruits in the past, as the primordial humans make excellent potential space marines. Only a small percentage of them reject the genetic modifications that make a space marine superhuman, while their simple minds are easily adapted to the mental conditioning all space marines undergo. However, even that supply of battle brothers has proved insufficient as the flesh terror's defective gene seed accelerates in its degradation. This has increased the burden on the chaplains and sanguinary priests whose responsibility it is to restrain brethren whose violent and uncontrollable behaviour forces them to be kept apart from other marines. They are habitually locked away in a purpose-made prison known as the Tower of the Lost, located many miles from the main stronghold of the fortress monastery. The victims of the Black Rage imprisoned within the Tower of the Lost constantly howl their fury at the walls surrounding them, their wailing cries competing with the roars of the huge creatures that prowl the swamps around the tower. The chaplains and priests constantly search and experiment, anxious to discover a cure for their lost brothers and bring them back into the chapter, knowing all the time that the Black Rage will soon consume them as well. It is the duty of the librarians of the Flesh Terrors to travel widely, desperate to find the ancient and sacred texts which they believe must exist, in the hope of finding lasting salvation from their curse. Carnarvon, High Chaplain of the Death Company, Watcher of the Lost. The High Chaplain of the Death Company bears a terrible responsibility, as it falls to him to watch over all 400 remaining Space Marines of the Flesh Terror's chapter for the onset of the Black Rage. This is a position he has occupied for nearly 250 years, and it is whispered by many that the strain of watching so many of his friends and comrades descend into the rage, becoming raving lunatics, hungry only for blood, has started to take its toll on his sanity. At this time, he has the final word as to who must be inducted into the Death Company, and which of those marines must be permanently incarcerated in the Terror of the Lost when they fall so far into madness that even he cannot control them. When not in combat, Carnarvon 
spends most of his time within the Tower of the Lost, watching over his charges, ostensibly to find a path that will allow them to rejoin the chapter. However, his constant secrecy has a great many of the flesh terrors questioning his motives. Combat Doctrine The flesh terrors are considered by Imperial strategists to be the epitome of a dedicated assault force. Those who have actually witnessed their bloodthirstiness in action, however, report of seemingly calculated brutality and savagery on an unparalleled level. A flesh terror's army in battle seeks nothing more than to rush towards the enemy with all haste in an effort to tear them apart with chainswords and power fists and, if need be, their bare hands and teeth. Heavy weapons and armoured vehicles are eschewed in all but the very largest of armies as the barely controlled bloodlust that arises in every battle brother drives each flesh terror space marine forward to destroy their foes in close combat. The extremely limited vehicle resources of the chapter tend to be concentrated on transports such as rhinos and razorbacks as the flesh terrors prefer to surge forwards and take the enemy with bolt pistol and power axe. When confronted by enemies who cower within bunkers and fortifications, the flesh terrors employ short-ranged melter weapons, power fists and even their own raw strength. Once unleashed, they will permit nothing to stand between themselves and the gratification they can find only in close combat. There have been occasions, though none well documented, when allied forces have accidentally interposed themselves between the flesh terrors and their foe. The flesh terrors remain unrepentant to this day regarding the savage consequences of this folly. The terrible violence that follows a flesh terrors army has made many other forces of the Imperium extremely weary of fighting alongside these space marines. Carefully laid plans can be shattered by the flesh terrors' eagerness for combat and their bloodthirsty actions on the battlefield have sickened even veterans of countless wars. The chapter has been under almost constant inquisitorial investigation following the Kalan massacre of M36 and some Imperial Guard officers have dared to refuse the dubious honour of fighting alongside the flesh terrors particularly after rumours started to spread concerning their vindictive assaults on entire planetary populations during the Arakata uprisings of M39. Relatively few forces have fought alongside the Flesh Terrors more than once. Claims regarding their unnatural behaviour during the Feast of Victory, during which many enemy prisoners disappear, have meant few force commanders are willing to stay in the vicinity once the fighting is finished. Organisation Though originally formed within the dictates of the Codex Astartes, the Flesh Terrors have been ravaged by the curse of Black Rage and now number barely four full companies. Unless some salvation can be found, their numbers may be halved within the next millennium. Though the chapter tries to adhere to the Codex Astartes, adjustments to the structure of their companies have been necessitated by their depleted numbers. All four are considered to be battle companies with no reserve being present anywhere in the chapter. Each marine is fully expected to be proficient in tactical assault and even devastator duties, as well as being skilled in the operation of all the chapter's remaining vehicles. In theatres of war, individual squads will rapidly change their role to suit the mission and equipment on hand. In addition, the first company breaking from the tradition of most Space Marine chapters is not a pure veteran force, as so few flesh terrors are able to withstand the pressure of the Black Rage long enough to gain such status. Instead, individual squads of veteran marines are formed within each company out of the most accomplished warriors they have. The Flesh Terror's fleet is also comparatively small, with the Battle Barge Victus being their only major warship. The Victus is millennia old, but has been kept in fighting condition and is capable of transporting the entire chapter. A far more common sight for the enemies of the Emperor are the seven rapid strike vessels which the chapter keeps in operation. Each has been modified to carry an entire company. Battle Cry The Flesh Terrors have developed a dreadful cry when they charge that, amplified by their power armour's Vox systems, has been known to stun lesser enemies into utter submission. To date, there have been no recordings made of their cry, though the few survivors of their assaults have described it as a wailing sound that drove deep into their minds, bringing to the fore an absolute terror that made it almost impossible to halt the Space Marines' brutal assault. And there's the Flesh Terrors, one of my favourite chapters, 
One of the only um, Space Marine chapters I ever really did a full army for back in the day when I actually did that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, I had a full army. It was great. I loved it. And then I sold it on eBay. Because <laughs> I, need, I needed some money. What was I trying to do? I think I was going to Download Festival. Jesus Christ, that's how long ago that was. But the Flesh Terrors have always been my favourite ever since they first sort of appeared. And uh, Seth has gone on to become one of my favourite sort of uh, characters within 40k. Particularly in Devastation of Baal. A good chunk of that book is devoted to him. Now, surprisingly, there is a Flesh Terrors series, which I haven't fully read, although I've listened to some of the audios for the short stories that have come from it. But I need to get into that and read that because it looks really, really good, really fun. And and now, I suppose, with the, the whole Primaris thing, I was worried they would lose a bit of their edge, but it appears that the Primaris do suffer from the, um, whatever you want to say, the, the genetic defects or blessings, depending on your point of view. But yes, yeah, Seth is one of the best, and hopefully we'll see him pop up in some of the novels from Guy Haley again around the Blood Angel stuff and everything and we'll see where his mind's at now. Read Devastation of Baal if you haven't. It's one of the best standalone novels. As a standalone novel it is perfect. Obviously there's other ones associated with it. It's part of a series but uh, if you're going to read one novel, get Devastation of Baal. But yeah, Seth my boy. My boy Seth. Anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you all for supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate it lads. Thank you very much. I'll be back again with more stuff very, very soon. Do remember to like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed. All that, all that jazz, you know. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.